Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for game two. Who's ready? I mean, a phenomenal, phenomenal game number one. Outstanding, consistent macro from Flash, but life just a little bit better. The most important word in there, Marcus, is a little bit. If at any moment life missed one round of inject, missed a couple of links, had them in the wrong position, then that means Flash would have been able to overrun. If any of those mines had connected just a little bit better, every single one of those Zergling packs would have been annihilated and Flash could have swarmed in. Perfect control by life, perfect macro by life, and that is the only way that you can take on KT Flash. And amongst two amazing players, Minimizing one's mistakes and maximizing punishing of your opponent's mistakes yeah. is going to be huge in this particular matchup. Now, uh, obviously, we're going to be getting into this game in just a moment. Yes. Thank you for joining us here for MLG Sunday. It's a 2013 Winter Championship, the first event of 2013 for MLG. It's been great. Thank you, everyone who came out, and of course, everyone online record-setting numbers here for StarCraft II. Congratulations, guys. You are awesome as fans. I mean, I, I'm gonna clap for you right by my mic. I don't care, you guys were amazing. I will say, Husky StarCraft and I were here late till 1.30 in the morning in a dedicated- I was in the crowd. I love that. Anyone else stay here till 1.30 last night? I did. I'm, surprisingly, it's the same group of people. Everyone. I stayed till 1.30 on Saturday, and when the finals came around, I decided to go to sleep. <laughs> Good Goodness, no. I mean, these esports fans so dedicated to be here. I mean, I want to talk a little bit more about the crazy opening that happened at the start of that game. Your average Zerg relies heavily on subtle timings, exact timings to be able to hold everything off. But it seems like no matter what you throw at life, he comes up with a perfect answer. So far, uh, well, I mean, game one has shown us that uh, he has the answers, and throughout this tournament, I think it's also been evident. However, this is Flash that he's up against, and one game is not really going to phase him. We are going live, ladies and gentlemen. GSL Whirlwind SE is going to be the map. This is game number two to determine who is going to walk away as the first champion at MLG for 2013 and be $25,000 richer. But you know what life wants to do is what so many other players have failed to do. Win two MLGs in a row. MLG for a long time, it was always the newest players were the ones winning. For a long time, the only players who won MLGs were those who signed up to open brackets. It would be historic for life to win back to back after his debut. Believe it or not, at the first MLG StarCraft II competition, who were the finalists? Do you remember? It was, it was Kiwi Kaki and Huck in That's 2010, right. MLG Raleigh. Here we are, 2013. Your finalists are Life and Flash. Let's introduce these players in the Southwest position as the Red Zerg. Give it up for Star Tail Life. And spawning in the northeast position of his map of choice, Whirlwind SE from KT, the god of Brood War. It is Flash! And once again, we see Life comfortable with this opening, dropping the pool, seeing if he can get the damage. Of course, this is Whirlwind. This map is huge. And uh, I have to ask you about this, Sean, yeah. because if you look at what transpired in the previous game, we had the situation where Flash, of course, found the natural rather quickly, was able to block with the engineering bay, yep. and then, of course, adjust his build accordingly. But this is Whirlwind. This is like the biggest real estate in StarCraft II. Yeah, and you know, two important things to consider. One, life, one of his highest percentage maps. Oh, let me just say right now, Flash is going to be just fine. He built that command center on the yep, high ground. Yep. Not going to take a risk. Life, 10 pools on this map, well over 70% of the time against Terran. One of his absolute highest win rate maps. Flash has to know this, especially considering that Life successfully 10 pooled Flash at the last MLG right. Dallas just four months ago. So now Flash doing the smart thing, going to go command center first, but build it on his high ground. Life is going to be shut down from invading into the front. And look at this Flash already accelerating to the refinery. Yeah, he's, he's ready for this. And you know, like you said, Flash, he, he's not going to let a strategy beat him twice, or at least 
he's going to be damn good at not letting him beat it twice. But, you know, I mean, off of this, we also saw that life was able to open with this and recover just fine. There's yes. not anything that's going to put him behind. It's just, hey, can I get this early advantage? If I can't, great. And if not, we'll just get back to business. Yeah, I mean, life loses a little bit of time on his expansion. Flash sure. is going to lose a little bit of money on this uh, ooh, on this repair action. And the SCB does get picked off. Does the other SCB get picked off? Oh, wow. This is actually a big win right now for life. In that health, we see oh. that it looks like it's going to be, oh, gosh, a third SCB flash down to wow, 15 SCB versus 12 drones. Now watch the way that Life controls this. He's going to let every link get down into red before he moves back. So awesome just to see that. We're going to have the factory going down right away. And these links are just going to pull back one by one, forcing some minerals and, of course, SCVs to get on that repair. Finally, Life will go ahead and retreat back. But now that he's got these Zerglings out, he uses it just to control space, to get vision on the map. So it is not, lo not at lost at all. Well, this is a really uncomfortable position for Flash because can he actually lift up his barracks? He's going to have to lift his factory, move it forward far enough to see that there's no lings, and then land lift immediately. It's, it's kind of a dicey spot, but, you know, I trust Flash to do it well, Marcus. <laughs> yeah, you th I think he's capable, Sean. It, it should be okay. We've got life now. Just moving out uh, with his Zerglings, again, getting whatever vision he can, separating himself uh, or s spreading himself out across the map. And we have the one gas down. Pretty soon we should be seeing speed coming out here for life. And then beyond that, well, it's anyone's guess. You know, I want to talk a little bit about adjustment and why these sure. two players impress me so much. Flash, how does he adjust? Almost none. And I don't mean he's a robot who just follows a build order and hopes it works. I mean, if he gets 10 pooled and loses because he built the command center first on the low ground, he'll do the same build but construct it on the high ground. He does tiny uh, adjustments of building placement, of positioning, rather than doing anything wildly different. Life, on the other hand, is very good at intuiting correct responses. We've seen him up against this Biomine style, against these Reaper Hellion openings. Every other Zerg fell. Life weirdly rushing to layer for Baneling speed. Very, very odd, but absolutely correct given the circumstances. So this is a perfect example of life. Going to be up in this spot, something where he's had a lot of practice, but Flash, I honestly trust more with just general build refinement. Third base for life has gone down, and now Flash's Hellions are out. There's not, well, there's a queen, two queens, and three Zerglings. He could go oh, directly no. into the main if he wanted to, and that's exactly what he's going to do. He gets rid of the Zerglings first. Queen still eating away at these Hellions, but the Whoa. drones get fried there. Flash gets inside oh my the main. God. He's doing a ton of damage. Another one goes down. How much damage can he do, He however? can fit behind. Oh, no, Marcus, those drones are lining up, but Flash knows not to get too risky. He's going to pull back, see if he can poke at the main. Nothing wrong with just pulling back. Couple Zerglings trying to counterattack the front. Oh, the drone block on the Hellions allow those Zerglings to get in at the natural. Not a whole lot is lost, but a total of eight workers killed by Flash. This is a nice spot for Flash, still making additional Hellions. The big goal for Flash right now to get those 1-1 one, one upgrades started as fast as possible for his Marine Marauder, because if he gets a good upgrade lead, he is going to be stepping way far ahead once those intense micro battles begin. In a very rare circumstance, we're seeing that the upgrades are quite far ahead for Flash when compared to life. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, the Evo Chamber's not yet complete here at the front, trying to build that wall and make it a little bit harder for these Hellions to actually uh, access that natural We've got two more Hellions coming out here, and I have to imagine oh, two more racks behind this as well. So, mm. oh, more Lings out on the map, but man, I mean, life is keeping a very minimal amount of units back at home just in case those Hellions come in, but that's the kind of player he is. He can react and take care of it, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Now, Flash is doing something just very, very scary risky. He has his third command center at the expansion already. He's going to be moving these six Hellions up. There's really no vulnerabilities right now uh, for life. He doesn't even really have any drones at his third base. In fact, his drone count is down to about 50. Same as Flash. So it looks like Flash is going to say, you know what? Time to just take no risk. Bring these home. My goal is not to win with Hellions. It's right. to win later with Biomine. I just got to stay alive until then. 
And uh, he's going to do his absolute best. He pulls everything back. He now starts to secure this third base. And as we know, the third base was a huge target in the last matchup, trying to deny Flash that ability to uh -oh. get yet another expansion up. And they Zerglings are going to find that, hey, there's something going on over here, and it's probably not just the Terran party. There's most certainly a base. Those Hellions do stop the Zerglings from going in. Quite a few are roasted, but he knows about it, and knowledge is power. Yeah, I mean, the fact is both these players always know how to exploit in the long term. They're not rushing to bust in there and say, oh, maybe the bunker isn't done. Maybe I can rush in and pick it off with these links. No risks really taken by either of these players. Kind of in a contrast to last game, we see the Spire going down as, as fast as life really possibly can. Before, he was delaying, delaying, delaying. Right, right. And now he's uh, got it off. Probably a much better time, at, like, is in sync with him. His 1-1 one, one upgrade's about to finish right as 2-2. Two, two begin for Flash. Of course, with the lair already done, he can, uh, life can resume those uh -oh. almost immediately. Oh, they're Some going in. Slip right on up into the main base. Can these mines get burrowed in time? You betcha. Flash has that on lockdown. Couple of Zerglings engage these Marines. One, two Marines will fall. But you know, Marcus, I want to point something out. Flash is using these supply depots to wall off at his third base but he's not building extra supply depots. There's a supply depot he needs to build anyways. Now it looks like we're seeing life have to construct a defense. Spire isn't done yet. No, it's not. And we do see Life trying to separate his army to make sure that he can get some sort of surround on this little force that is moving forward. But his Flash to decide, I don't want to attack right there. I want to attack up here at this third. And Life is going to have to rotate his entire army around. Uh -oh, oh, the failing. Oh, it does detonate, but the Hellions take a majority of that damage. And now it looks like a simple surround from the back side. The mines do some nice damage to those Zerglings, but once again, life is alive and well, but the real danger is that huge pack of Marine Marauder in the middle of the map, heading down. Single Marine for Flash monitoring the third, and it looks like now that the mines are recharging, Flash is moving up to the left expo again. He's going back in. Mutas are there, and uh, he does manage to take out that spine crawler. Should be another big hit uh -oh! on these Zerglings. Oh! Oh, a gigantic connection. And Meanwhile, it's the dropping the main, it's going in. Two medevacs fully filled marine, a single marauder. Actually, that might be a mine. Yes, it's a marauder. He's going to go in here. This should do a ton of damage. Here's the reaction, but only a handful of Zerglings coming in for life. Hero Widow Mine in the north, 23 kills, the drop at the back, life tumbling in supply. Flash maintains a convincing lead at 160 food, 2-2 two, two upgrades, almost down the pool, Marcus. The pool, the pool it's at half health, it's That's... at quarter health. He's desperate to save it, and it falls. Oh, right now, all he can really make is Mutas at this point, and we see life going for Ventral Sacks as well. He had the wow. idea to go in for drop. Meanwhile, GG! G -G! Flash ties it up. 1-1, one, one. the aggression is too much, and life is forced out of the game. Flash put everything that he had there at the third, but really, it was just a distraction. So he could get that double medevac drop into the main base. Killing that ghoul is such a crippling blow. Like, life is on crutches, and Flash just kicks both of them out from him. Life has nothing left. You know, it was it was a funny contrast between last game and this one. Last game, Flash seems to come out all clever, blocking with the engineering bay, walling himself in with the barracks, and delaying his own expansion. This game, Flash said, I have my build order, I'm going to stick to it. And what did we see? With almost no confrontations, Flash leapt ahead, 40 supply, almost immediately. And like we were saying in game one, it took perfect control to avoid those mines. It took perfect macro to keep up with Flash. This game, one mine connection kills 23 Zerglings in a single blow, and that was lights out for life. And I love what you were saying about Flash being so patient, waiting for the Widow Mines to reload. Yes, you can force the fight right there, but if you can get that one solid connect, whether it was on his Mutilus or the Lings, it was going to allow him to really start to overrun that base. It's exactly what happened. And then the drop in the main was just too much. I'm not sure what our next map is going to be. Of course, it's life selection, uh -huh. but either way, this is a hell of a way to kick off the finals of the Winter Championship. MLG Winter Championship Grand Finals Best of Seven begins 1-1. Stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to be hopping right into Game 3.